My name's Laura and this is The Tiny Garden. I made a little garden boo-boo and I was like, oh, I was just out here, I was sweeping up and ready to like bring you guys out in the garden. And then I was like, oh, I'll just take that little leaf off and it'll be absolutely fine. And then I literally just went through like two layers of like stem and I've completely chopped off my pumpkin. So there it is on the floor, which is great. I do have one more pumpkin growing, so all is not lost. And I'll show you that in a little while when I whiz you around the rest of the garden. And yeah, so sadly, no pumpkin anymore, guys, which is a bit of a shame. Um, and also I thought this patty pan was okay, but it has snapped in the storm. I actually thought it was all right, but it's not. So I'm gonna pull this one out. I'm gonna leave the other one in, trim back all the dead leaves that are on there and that will tidy up that space. So yeah, general garden tidy. Can't believe I went through that. Like I am just the world's worst for destroying and cutting things off that do not need to be cut off. And all is not lost on the patty pans because I have a massive one growing here, which is nearly the height of me. And it's literally growing like a hedgerow of patty pans. So I'm really, really happy with that. And like, I can just get rid of the other three because they are starting to kind of show like signs of like mildew, but this one is like thriving. So I just feel like I'm gonna cut those ones back, repurpose those pots for other things that I can sow for autumn and winter. And like, I'm gonna take you in and take you a closer look at the patty pan because we have some really exciting things in there growing. There's one and he's looking great. And then there's another one just down here. I can find it there it is but it's sprawled out everywhere I have cut this back a few times there it is so there should be two there it has completely sprawled across this bed all over the French beans we probably have a few French beans to actually pick actually let's have a little look down here is there a few in here yeah look few French beans that can be picked as well and I might try and pick some of these smaller patty pans this would be like my first year growing patty pans I know they are like a courgette type squash so I'm not sure what they taste like so I'm really looking forward to trying those and I feel like the bigger ones I might be able to stuff and then the smaller ones I might be able to like roast or I don't know saute up with something but if anyone has any good patty pan recipes I'd love to know in the comments below because I've never grown them before and I'd be really excited to see what I could make that really like heroes the patty pan on the dish. And I'm absolutely thrilled that the patty pans are now producing because I just felt like it was growing and growing and growing. And I thought maybe where I had put, originally planted the four patty pans in that bed, I'd obviously put four lots of manure into that space as well. So I was thinking, oh, maybe that's why, like it's just growing loads and loads and loads of foliage and it's not actually gonna produce anything because all of the patty pans that I've seen around when you Google it on, on YouTube, like they're really small and compact plants. So I just left this now, like I was like, keep cutting it back. It keeps wanting to grow. So I just thought, you know what, if we don't get anything else from this tiny garden this year, at least we might get a patty pan. So I've left this the last three weeks to grow and grow and grow and grow and grow. And I'm super chuffed with it because it's now putting on fruit, it's setting fruit, the bees are pollinating in it and it's just all round such a little joy and like I've made my own little miniature hedgerow in the tiny garden so that's the patty pan and there are a few other things that are growing in here which I think are great so my brassicas are doing absolutely wonderful but you can see obviously the brassica cage has fallen off completely during the last storm I just didn't get round to putting it back on and everything seems to like bushed out of the cage since the netting's not been on there, but I've also found that since putting the netting on, the brassicas are absolutely flying it. So I've got sprouts and I've got kale in here and I've got a few sprout and bro broccoli plant plants in here. But I feel like I've put the netting on it and they're flying it, right? And I'm so chuffed because like my sprouts last year, I did spend a lot of time having to clean them up on the Christmas dinner because obviously there was a few slugs and the caterpillars obviously got to them because I grew them with no protection or cover on them. But like, I feel like now that I've netted this, the butterflies have just got an appetite for everything else in the garden and particularly my carrots so like i have no carrots now <laughs> the baby caterpillars are obviously eating my carrots so i'm going to try and make more space today because i have to have carrots for my christmas dinner i'm going to be so sad if i can't get them i'm going to try and see can i do something to protect them i might even bring them indoors just so they germinate get a little bit stronger get their true leaves and then pop them back outside because i need the carrots because christmas dinner just won't be the same <laughs> 
So I'm wondering, it might not just be caterpillars, I might have a slug problem as well. And like, sod's law really, isn't it? Because I said the other week that I didn't have a slug problem and now I can't get my carrot seedlings to live much longer than about a week. But what I'll do is I will bring you in and let you have a closer look at the brassica cage and everything that's growing in this main bed. I do have some purple sprouting broccoli in this bed as well. These are actually in pots still at the minute. And I was hoping to use those during the hungry gap. So I've left them in pots because obviously I want to change this whole bed round. But I imagine the roots have grown into the soil beneath anyway. Again, I've probably densely planted them too much, but if you don't try, you wouldn't know what works. So there's probably like five or six brassica plants in there, just starting to produce their little nubbins on the stalk. Do you see there? Isn't that wonderful? So I'm hoping that they do really well. So I will come in and I'm gonna tidy up some of the lower leaves and just get a bit more ventilation going through here. And it means I'll be able to walk around again. So I might take off like all of these leaves here so that I can actually like walk past this area here because it is a little bit of a struggle. And my peppers, they're not doing so great, but I'm surprised that they have produced any flowers at all because they are completely, completely shaded out by the brassicas there. So, I mean, there is a little, there is a little pepper on there. And then there's a couple more peppers on the back. And then this one's only just setting fruit now, but I feel like because the weather hasn't been great, I don't think they're gonna do that well. And then I have some salady bits actually that are now being crowded out by the patty pan. I've been picking those lettuce leaves as like cut and come again. And there's a few spring onions in there. But yeah, overall, not too bad. And I'll just give you a little look at the carrot situation. So obviously we sowed these a few weeks back and we only have two carrots. This whole, all, the, all of the seeds germinated. I had a beautiful line of like sort of carrot grass growing here and I only have like two little measly carrots growing in here. I've done, I've come in and done a second sowing and they are just cropping up there now. But yeah, absolute win on the kale, brass sprout, brassica front. They look unreal. So that kind of summarizes that main bed. And I reckon this whole space is gonna look so different as we come into autumn and have our winter autumn gardens and then obviously the whole tiny garden revamp that's happening so the cleared path is doing a great job i can actually get in and out of here patty pan is slightly encroaching but we would respect expect anything else from that absolute beast of a plant i mean look at even from this angle guys it's actually ridiculous all is going good down here to be fair given the catastrophes of the blight on the red cherries my costa luto is holding on, which is fab. Here it is. I have three there. There was four on that truss, but I cut it off. And so far, so good. No blemishes, no signs of blight either on those fruits. So they have started to go a slightly different shade of green. So I feel like not long now before they might ripen. And we get to harvest some tomatoes together today because I left the later tomato variety in and it's got some beautiful blushed fruits on it. So I definitely think clearing out the petunias and the marigolds has completely opened up this space and saved these crops from succumbing to the blight issue in this garden. So I'm so chuffed because I actually get like a slightly larger tomato than my cherries. So we're gonna pick those together today. Now this plant did take a bit of a beating in the storm and it has like keeled over the stem is bending over there is fruit there like laying in the mud so i do need to try and figure that out but it's on its last legs i'd say anyway but we got some tomatoes and i'm so happy to show you some beautiful red fruits other than my red cherries so i'm really really chuffed with that i'm going to cut that open today and have it for my lunch so i'm so happy to show you the red tomato like I really thought it was gonna completely take over the whole garden, the blight, but like I'm so chuffed because we get to pick two beautiful red tomatoes today. 
That variety is a bush variety and I did have a slight issue with it because I've never grown um, bush varieties before. So like I was on autopilot pruning and I actually ended up like snapping off like the suckers, which I thought were suckers, but they weren't. So with the bush varieties, like I'm not going to do that next year. I'm just going to leave it grow and like not prune it because I think I obviously hindered the amount of fruit that would have produced. But look, we learn it's a new variety for me. I've only ever grown vining or cordon type tomatoes. So yeah, lesson learnt for next year. But I suppose I, I probably actually helped it given the bad weather. So there was less energy into producing loads and loads of fruit it actually just put the energy into producing the fruit that it had. So all is not lost. And yeah, Costolito, look at that. They're just such a fab, fab shape, aren't they? I really, really, really have got my fingers crossed for these turning red. Um, and if they don't, I'm definitely gonna bring them inside the house, put them in a paper bag with a banana and see will they ripen inside if I have to cut them off and bring them in. But all in all, the few crops there are holding on. And here is my cucumber. Isn't it lovely? So I've got a few little fruits to pick on there. I think I've got about five or six. So it hasn't grown as long as I thought it would. I thought it would grow the full length of that trellis. Growing the two stems isn't actually as productive because I feel like I've only had two or three off the second stem. So I have that running across the parallel bamboo there. You can see that the main stem has most of the fruit on it, which is interesting. So I think next year I might just plant two plants, but given the mediocre weather we've had, it's doing not so bad actually. I probably have slightly less of a yield than last year, but still enough because I had so many last year. So it's enough to have, you know, a salad every day and that kind of thing, which is wonderful. And then the last thing we have planted in this bed here is the pumpkin which I thought was doing really, really well until I had a look at the, the fruit on it and the fruit started to go wrinkly. So it was definitely pollinated. Out of our remaining pumpkin plants, this is all I have left. And I had high hopes for that little fruit down there, but it's gone wrinkly, you can see. And I'm not sure, like I know fruit, fruit trees and things, you get fruit drop and that kind of thing. So maybe it's the same, but Real shame, there is a few more flowers on this. So there's one there, and the main stem is growing strong. There is real potential for that pumpkin, but I definitely should have got it in the ground a lot sooner than I did. I was like hesitating whether to put it in or out because I just didn't have the space. So I definitely think it should have gone in like two months before I actually planted it, which is such a shame. I'm still holding out for a good September and hopefully it will just give it the little growth kick that it needs. And I might just give it a little bit of a feed to give it a little boost because I'm still wanting to enter the competition. And if I don't have a pumpkin, I can't enter the competition, but I'm still glad that I tried because it's something I've never, ever, ever grown before. And it gives me more experience for next year, maybe pop in a few archways or something and a bit of a better vertical support for them. The turnips are looking vibrant and vigorously growing. Again, I've probably sown way too many than I need, but we'll see how it goes and I can just thin them out. So I've already thinned them once. I am really, really, really pleased with the beetroot that's in here. At the start of the season in spring, the beets just came under so much pressure from leaf miner. It was the first time I'd ever seen leaf miner. I didn't know what it was and the leaves were absolutely destroyed. So they are looking so healthy and so strong. Turnips have come up and they're looking wonderful. The leeks in here are looking to quite good as well. They haven't come down with rust, which I'm surprised with because rust seems to be a bit of a problem with my leeks this year, which is such a shame. I don't know how they're gonna fare. I feel like I didn't put my leeks in early enough, but I feel like I did it the same time as last year, but they just haven't grown as big. So we'll keep an eye on those, but hopefully they kind of put on a bit of growth and bulk up a little bit because I love leeks. I will sort those patty pans out and my poor little pumpkin stalk, which I'll need to pull out. Can't believe I did that. And my lettuce. My new salad bed's doing great, apart from the basil looks like it's been taken a little bit of a beating over here. The wind has been kind of bad. So it's obviously been nibbled. There's a little bit of fungus pressure on it. So I might cut it back. But yeah, Basil's looking a bit tired, but the Lola Rosso and the little gem that's in here is doing really, really well. 
it's doubled in size I feel since we planted it last week. I have some, I think that's winter density in the back. Yeah, that's winter density, that's just flying it. And then I interplanted leeks in between it. So when the lettuce is done, the leeks will grow on hopefully. So yeah, super chuffed with that. And Lola Rosso leaves are just wonderful, aren't they? How gorgeous are they? And that purple little gem, it's kind of hard to see because it's so close to the color of the mud. But I've got some more of that planted actually in my blueberry pots just to see would it work. And the idea behind me putting the little gem into the blueberries is because I just wanted to see as an experiment, you know, like bust a garden myth and see could you interplant or companion plant with blueberries. I know like if you Google it, it will say that blueberries are really difficult to obviously companion plant with. So I've popped in the lettuce because obviously the blueberries are finished fruit in and I just wanted to see what it would look like. And I think you'll be interested um, at how it's getting on. So here are the little gem planted in with the blueberries. How cool is that? So they're doing really, really well in there. Beautiful, that's moon red, little gem. Beautiful color. And I did the same on the other container. So they are looking really good. And they're like, we'll have lettuce, literally give it a week or two. And I'd say I can harvest some of that. And my potatoes aren't doing too bad. So they are, I feel like starting to die back a little bit. They have got some brown spot on them but I'm not gonna take them out. I don't think it's blight. I genuinely think that's brown spot, which is exactly how my last potatoes looked. And they don't need to come out. That's just another fungus disease. I think it's a cousin of blight. But being Sarpamira, they are a blight resistant variety. So obviously the foliage on them is absolutely massive, but I don't have high hopes for this harvest because you would see it in a couple of videos back. I can't remember what it was, I think, was it the May Garden Tour or something? And like, they were growing like probably what, 12 inches above the top of the bucket that they're in. And like the bucket was only filled halfway. So that was like 15 liters of compost. So I don't think I've given them the best start. So I reckon when we tip these out, I reckon there's gonna be a few potatoes on the bottom half of those containers and nothing anywhere else because I just didn't top heal them up in time. I should have done and I didn't. Well, celery is growing so strong. It's done so well this year. So that is the third flush that I'm getting now. And I don't plan to take this out until the first frost, when the frost will kill it off. And all in all, a great, great crop. I. I was unsure at the start of the season, they were fragile, they were very, very fragile, but do you know what? They are looking so strong. And I've, yeah, I've done three, this is the third flush. I'll cut a bit back again and see how it goes. Like it hasn't started to bowl or flower or anything. So like one good learning from this season is like the weather, there's still so much you can actually grow when the weather and the warm season things aren't doing so well. Something like this will absolutely thrive in like a mediocre summer. So yeah, and my leeks, I need to go in and tidy up. There is a rust again on the leeks, but I'm gonna go in, trim back the leaves and hopefully they will do a bit better. I thought I should also mention as well, I actually grow everything in this garden from seed myself, other than like things like the flowers, Actually, I grew the marigolds myself. Other than the, like, the trees, like the plum tree, the cherry tree, the, the bulbs, like the anemone, the lilies, and the items in that flower bed and the flower pots, like everything else I grew from seed. I just think that's mad. It's just so amazing. Like this tiny little seed can produce these amazing abundant crops. I really feel like the novelty of that will never go away for me. I just find it so fascinating that like an itty bitty bitty seed can produce like a massive crop. Like that patty pan, the seed was about like, about that big. <laughs> and it's produced this massive like hedgerow and it's gonna produce the most amazing fruit. And like from the tiniest little seed with like, that's it, like just, I don't know, maybe I'm not getting my point across right, but like maybe you understand where I'm coming from. I just find it genuinely 
so fascinating and I don't think that will ever wear off. I wanted to share with you some of the seeds that I'm actually going to be sowing this week just in case you were wondering if there was anything you could still sow. There is a little bit of time and there are some perfect crops that you can actually sow and get a harvest throughout autumn. I'm going to be sowing salad leaves, carrots and some spring onions so I will give you a full list in the description below of all the varieties that I'm growing. These are specifically for winter hardiness that's why I've chosen them because they should withstand like frosts and things like that. The first of the crops that I'm sowing is going to be lettuce. I've got five types that I'm going to be sowing. The first is rocket. We did this earlier in the season. This is a beautiful variety and it just started to bolt during the summer months so I'm going to give this another go and I think it will be absolutely perfect for now. You can sow indoors or outdoors. I'm going to try some winter purslane. I've never grown this before, but it's supposed to be absolutely perfect for like winter hardiness. So I'm really looking forward to this. I'm also going to be sowing some land cress. I always see um, Jamie Oliver doing like roast beef recipes and then he puts like cress on the side, but I never seem to find like the type of like watercress that he's talking about. So I think this is the type of watercress that he puts with it. And I'm thinking as we come into autumn, a few roast beef dinners with a bit of this on the side would be perfect. Again, perfect winter hardiness. I've got some winter density. I'm gonna sow some more of this and I'm gonna grow some more lamb's lettuce. I did lamb's lettuce last year and I just didn't sow enough of it. So it's so nice. It's such a beautiful, delicate, really hardy lettuce. Like this actually got frozen, lasted through the frost of like minus five last year, bounced back in spring and gave a really early crop as well. And then it actually, if you leave it flower, sets the most beautiful tiny white flowers. So it's actually really, really nice if you leave it bolt when you're getting into spring. It's actually kind of nice and it's like a nice little plant for pollinators when there's not much else around. So those are the lettuce varieties I'm growing. I'm going to be sowing some more spring onions. They are white Lisbon. I always sow white Lisbon. And I'm gonna sow two varieties of carrots. You've seen these before. So we're gonna go with the Chantenay and we're gonna go with the Paris Market 5 because the caterpillars have eaten all of mine. We are going to be sowing some more Asian greens. I did try Pak Choi at the very start of the season. It just got absolutely annihilated by pests eating it and it bolted for me as well. The ones that did survive, I think I managed to eat one out of like the 12 that I had. So just Canton white pak choy. And they are, that's the conclusion of what I'm doing. So I just wanted to pop that little uh, tidbit of information in there, just in case you're wondering if there was anything to sew. I didn't want to do a long lengthy video on it, but they're just what I'm going to be doing. When I was only, my main goal today was to come and prune a few bits. So I have definitely got a good few days worth of veggies in here. And I got my first patty pan. I'm so excited to try these. I cannot wait, I'm so looking forward to it. So I picked like a, a range of sizes because the bigger ones seem to be a bit like more pale yellow. I was ex expecting them to be a little bit brighter. So there's a range of um, sizes there for the patty pan and I'm so excited to look at everything that I got. I'm so pleased. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today and I will see you in the next one. Bye.